Hola fam and welcome back to another episode of Latina Geek. Hi friends. First of all, I wanted to say thank you. Uh, I want to say thank you to my friends and my family who have supported this channel, who have shared it, and um, more so than even I had. I, I, it took a lot of convincing to do it uh, simply because I am very, very aware of how uh, cruel the internet can be. So thank you for supporting me, for listening, for hearing my pitch, because this is definitely a passion project of mine. Um, we are going to hit 50 videos here soon. And my own personal goal was to get at least 100 views on one of the videos. So, if you feel so inclined, I would love it if you shared it, uh, if not on your page, at least somewhere. Or um, even leave a comment down below and uh, hit the like button. So, uh, we are a week until I will be published in a magazine for some of the works that I've been doing. And I'll link it down below. Uh, Keep an eye out for that link. Epifania has been incredibly supportive ever since they reached out to me through the Women in Snapchat takeover. And there's a good chance that I'll be even taking over the Epifania Snapchat. So keep a look out for that. Um, lastly, I didn't give a warning the last time that I started playing this and I'm so sorry. Um, this is an official warning. It gets kind of grotesque. So if you are not a fan of I would say like Hannibal Lecter style stuff, then maybe this video is not for you or the little squishies. Okay? Alright. Put on your big girl, big boy pants. Big they pants. cameraman he's got specks and water all on his camera oh wait that's me we'll be going up in a couple of minutes i'll wait for you in the cable car oh thanks up where? he just brought me and abandoned me masquerade ball in venice so I'm at a masquerade situation. That's rad. Ooh. Koi fish. <sighs> what are this? The Hindenburg. Her forced landing in New Jersey almost cost the lives of over 100 passengers. Hmm, yeah. Nearly a fireball in midair. It would have burned down half the city. Oop, sorry gentlemen. Guy's not having a very good day. Sorry, bro. Hey, Ryan, owner of Ryan Hotels, the visionary who transformed the Hindenburg into the monument to aeronautical luxury it is today. What a pensive mask person. I'm just sort of taking all of this in. <laughs> it's a really pretty scene. Ah, it ain't my coins. Rat. Okay, let's go. Well, you could have waited for me. I'm just saying.
That would make me crazy nervous. Especially if it was thundering and lightning outside. Scared of heights. Since I was a kid, I like to keep my feet on the ground. <laughs> that makes two of us. If you need a paper bag, I have one. How high does this thing go? Higher than the clouds. That doesn't seem like... It doesn't seem like that would keep the water out, especially if it was windy and that high. But hey, I'm just talking about the logistics of it. That and I, I would not want to be in the middle of a storm up in the air. I, I know, I know it's not real. That booty shake. <laughs> okay, so I'll go to the reception desk. All right, here we go. I would totally go to a party like this, even though it doesn't look like a party. Everybody's just sort of standing around in masks. I would totally go to one. I'm afraid I can't come with you. Thanks for the pie. But welcome to the Grand Hindenburg Hotel. My it's like name is Dumbledore. Susan, I'm glad to be of service. No wait. Your name, please. I'm Mr. Untouchable. In that case, I suggest you try not to live up to your name if you want to make the most of your stay at the Hindenburg, Mr. Untouchable. And now, how can I help you? I'm here to see Mr. Capone. There's no Mr. Capone here, Mr. Untouchable. Bitch, don't play me. Susan, I know more than 60 aliases for Al Capone, so you have two options. One is to delay my appointment with him until I guess the right one, which he is not going to like. The other is to send me through and earn my eternal gratitude and his. Your call. He's... he's in the presidential suite. Top floor at the end of the red carpet. Thank you, Susan. Have Man. a pleasant stay at the Grand Hindenburg Hotel, Mr. Untouchable. If I could wield that kind of power, <laughs> I would have so many socks. Your attention, please. The cable car to Santa Esperanza leaves in three minutes. All right. I really do need socks, though. It's, it's winter season and it's boot season. All right, so we had our way. Now we gotta make it upstairs. First, this gorgeous view. Wow. Higher than the clouds. P.S. I didn't mean Dumbledore. I meant Lord of the Rings fellow. I can do this without looking at my phone. Your attention, please. Gandalf. The cable car there we go. Woo! Leaves in yes. two minutes. Gandalf. He'll bring you to a party and this just straight up abandon your butt. So this has sort of like a hey, Chinese Ryan. Ryan steampunk feel. It's not cafe, but it's soda. The window cleaners up here deserve every cent they make. I wouldn't do it for all the money in the world. It's a thankless job, but somebody has to do it.
All right, well, we can check that out later. Some lovers. Damn. Will it? Come on! Ever give me a cold pop? Nope. The machines on the ship do not work. That's mildly concerning. Oh. <laughs> oh. Hubba hubba. Alright. We're almost there, kids. Almost there. Nothing to worry about, my good man. What happens on the Hindenburg stays on the Hindenburg. Including murder. Uh. Are you saying the law doesn't apply here? We're too high up, my good man. The law has always preferred to look down. All right, not gonna question it. You know? Okay. All right. <laughs> picture Wasn't that a receptionist? Bravo. Oh my god. Did that lady just die? Did I just kill somebody? I'm sorry. I had no idea that was an option before. <laughs> like I said, I, I have tested this, uh, but I never did that. So, hey, we learned something new today, guys. <laughs> Pretty sure somebody died on my watch. So that's great. If it wasn't for my habit of checking all possible exits when I walk into the lion's den, I'd be a dead man. You should be rotting in jail. That's exactly what I've been doing for the last 19 and a half years. Be surprised what a little good behavior can do for a person. Yeah, not gonna ask me for my last words this time. I'm a lot closer to death than when I last saw you. That's no better. Wait. Not close enough. Hmm? Close enough for who? If you knew how often I've dreamt of you dying, you'd never have called me. Look, uh, I didn't ask you here to find out who's got the snappiest comebacks. 
I want to hire you. Mm, what? I don't know how I, I feel about that. I require your services as a detective. I don't know what your game is, but if your plan was to surprise me, you've succeeded. Look, Ness. My granddaughter Sophia has been kidnapped. When what happened to my son, Vittorio, I, uh, I put her in a boarding school. She was entered under a false surname, Colombo. Nobody knows who she is. Nobody. You got a rat yeah, on your team. Only Milton, the man who brought you here. I trust him completely. Two days ago, a guy turned up at the boarding school. He introduced himself as Guido Colombo, the girl's uncle, and her new legal guardian. He said her parents had just died in a tragic automobile accident. He produced all the relevant papers, driver's license, the custody document supposedly made out by the father, the death certificates. He uh, explained the way the fact that the girl didn't know him by saying he moved to Seattle before she was born. Hey, it's my hometown! Oh. Uh, Wait a minute. <laughs> Sophia was wearing a blue dress with flowers that I personally ordered for her from Italy. And she was also wearing white ballet shoes with daisies embroidered on them. As for the guy, the school principal said he was tall and slim, uh, in his 50s. No particular accent. Black hair, no beard, no glasses. Well dressed. Could be anyone. But I know he was hired by one of my old associates. Oh, Someone shit. must have finished me once and for all. Maybe they want to control through your what's kids. left of my organization. Maybe they hate my guts. And I thought I was the only one who still hated you after 20 years. What else have you got? I got this. And I got you. You don't have me. My place is at my diner. And your girl's not there. Huh. So where should I be looking? You were the biggest boss in the Mafia, and by the looks of this place, you didn't lose everything. Why don't you ask one of your subordinates for help? You don't listen, do you? The kidnapper was hired by one of my men. One of the people I trust. So why me? Twenty years ago, I pushed you to the edge. I bought your friends and killed the ones who couldn't be bought. I got you so obsessed with me that your wife ended up leaving you. Who told you about that? When you had nothing left, you walked into my house, shot my bodyguards, and pointed a gun at me. You could have killed me. I should have killed you. But you chose to restrain yourself. You even gave my son a lecture on ethics. You're the only honest man I know. Damn it. I'll do it. Not for you. For her. I knew I got the right guy. But I want something in return. As you can see, I'm not short of money. Ask. I won't haggle. You give your entire fortune to the Santa Esperanza Hospice. That won't be difficult. I've been donating to them for decades. And I don't need the money anymore. I don't give a damn what happens to me, Ness. You just saved Sophia. Ah, that might have been the little girl in the beginning. And you can start by investigating Carlo Baccarini. How I got you know? this. Biggest forger in Santa Esperanza. Wouldn't surprise me if Sophia's so-called uncle's papers were made by him. Besides, he's been cursing your name ever since we put you in jail. Hey, I treated him like a son. After you killed his parents. They were selling booze without my permission. Wait, you know where to find them? I have a good contact at the station. A girl. Rookie. Straight arrow. Reliable. A girl? You were saying you trust her? You are such a chauvinist. Do you trust me? Deal? I think it was more focused on the fact that she was kind of young, but... Hey. Alright. Alright. That's a spirit. As you can see, Keep I have a little evil in me, apparently. Times, huh? You hear me? I know you from somewhere. Sweet Christmas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
not gonna ask me for my last words. You should be right. I'm never going to help you. Why me? I'm not asking you help me. I'm not a ghost. I'll do it. Not for you. For her. This is his Pocahontas moment, so be prepared. I could turn into the sauce, but I'm not gonna. Ness. Elliot, I found Carlo Baccarini. I knew you would, Alice. Write this down. 31 Wicker Avenue in Lakeview. Thanks. Nice work. Elliot, what do you want with him? He's got a hell of a file. Right now, it's better you don't know, Alice. What? Are you protecting me? I promised your father that I would. I'm a cop, not a little girl. Alice, I don't have much time. I'll let you know how it goes. Thanks. Are you ready for it, guys? Are you ready for this? This is what I've been happening up towards. This is it. You sure? I'm <sighs> sure. At last. That stench of steel grease about you reminds me too much of my old job. You worked as a waiter? I was a chef. And not in any old kitchen. At the maximum security penitentiary on Gore Island. Can't think of a better way to do time. And how do you think I met Alphonse? Playing golf? Alphonse? On the subject of cooking, I know your blueberry pie had an extra something. I still don't know what. Alphonse? So what now? You got a plan? Take a look around, in case there's a rear exit. I'll take the main door. My pleasure. <laughs> this guy has a habit of leaving me behind. I'm taking note of that. What is there to look at? What? The fact that a criminal like him can hang up his shingle in broad daylight says a lot about Santa Esperanza. Alright. I did see the other uh, the other thing, but I really want to get to this thing before <laughs> before we wrap it up. So yeah, buddy. Bakari. 
Baccarini? Carlo Baccarini? Nothing of interest out back. Sorry. You better come see this, Mr. Ness. What is it? I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> oh boy, here we go, kids. Is that our man? Baccarini. My God. We have to find out who did this and why. Let's go. You're the detective, Mr. Ness. Besides, Alfonso want to see this. I'll be right back. All right. I have to establish how Baccarini died. Maybe the body parts can shed some light on the motive. Okay, so it's going to show us a board. Whenever we find a new clue, it'll pop up on the board. So let's see what we see here. Holy Christ, what the hell are we up against? Oh man, that's gnarly. What? Here we go. We need to have that sweet spot. His eyes were pulled clean out of their sockets. Whoever did this, it wasn't their first time. And if they committed any other murders like this, it's likely that the police found some of the bodies. I must remember to ask Alice. So this is mad grotesque, but you get to investigate a murder scene. His teeth were all pulled out before he was killed. The buildup of blood inside his mouth speaks for itself. Nope. Got ourselves a clue. Okay. I have to establish how Baccarini died. All right. So, we're going to keep looking. Or maybe it doesn't allow. Here we go. That's what I was looking Pity for. It last till Christmas cuz he'd almost pass for a tree. There's no doubt the murderer took his time. This isn't a cut, it's a tear. His hands were ripped off. Who has that kind of strength? Okay, let's see if there's, if this will update us any bit more. S. S is the other one that we want to look for. The murderer tore Baccarini's hands off. There we go. Baccarini's teeth were all pulled out. So that's how we use the clues on the... Out. I guess I'll have to rule out criminal intent or a personal angle. Baccarini's eyes still haven't shown up. What if I look for whatever was used to remove them? Alright, I get it. But I'm not done looking at this. So we do get a few, a full view of it, which is just absolutely horrific every every way you slice it pun totally intended here we Once go he got stuck in there looks like the bottom of a glass it's baccarini no doubt about that although the one i remember was more together okay so and then we well, it use looks the like clue. the bottom of a broken glass buried in baccarini's okay. back okay so what that means when it shakes is that that clue doesn't associate with whatever we're kind of looking at. So if we want to go, there you go, back a step. So what it's telling me is there's no more, I guess, like clues to fill in. Each, each one has kind of a different section. So I still want to investigate a little bit more of the... Maybe I just have to search around a bit more. Here we go. It takes a strong man to tear that out. Or several. There we go. Okay. 
So we'll check out that clue now. E for slacks. And then... What looks like the bottom of a broken glass buried in Baccarini's back. The lamp, torn off its brackets and blocking... Okay, so we still need, we need to expand on that, so we'll totally get to that here in a bit. Hmm. Jammed shut from the inside. Maybe between the two of us when Milton gets back. So this is the part of the game <clears throat> I really dug, is the crime scene investigation. Like, really? That's intrigued me. A door in the corridor jammed shut. Gotta keep looking for clues, guys. That E is what we zoom in on. Hey, what do you know? That's what we Blood need. Blood and some kind of sticky liquid. <clears throat> Could it be Igu? Yep. A teaspoon stained with blood and some kind of sticky, the mixture of sticky liquid and blood can only mean one thing. The spoon was used to remove Baccarini's eyes. The mutilations and the disappearance of his eyes suggest two possible motives. Psychopathy or cultist fanaticism. Which is it? So we got it. We're moving on to a board with motive. The door in the corridor jammed shut. We're not quite there yet, so we'll just keep moving on. Oof. Well, well, well. Oh, shit. oh I man. Stayed in my diner. Yeah, you should have. <laughs> hey, I warned you guys, and you can't say that I didn't. That's graphic. Find that sweet spot. There we go. Are these teeth from the body? Well, at least I know why his teeth were pulled out, more or less. That <laughs> better have been a clue. All right, so let's see where we're at here. The sick altar of human flesh. What looks like the bottom of a broken glass. Okay. So we have a couple more things in here that we really need to look at. What is that? It's a symbol. Okay. Alright. Which should help us with some, some more kind motives. Of symbol drawn in blood. Although I don't know the origin of the symbol in the bathroom and the altar of flesh and teeth. I'd say the motive was some kind of occult religion. The big question is. Who did it? Prepare like your butts. What was Baccarini mixed up in? Oh. This car looks too classy for a forger like Baccarini. Are there sufficient reasons to believe that when the murderer attacked Baccarini, there was someone else in the house? The first possibility to be ruled out is that the car belonged to Baccarini. Oh. Alright, we got some more clues, y'all. Let's take a look in the glove compartment. Bingo. A man's cigarette case. OB. One of the Baccarini clan? Hey. 
Oh, what do you know? The initials OB on a cigarette case. Alright. Let's see what else we can find, kiddos. There has to be something else. Hey. Vermont plates. Someone drove a long way. A car with Vermont plates. One, it has Vermont plates. Two, it's too luxurious for a criminal of his standing. Three, the initials on the cigarette case don't match his name. The next possibility that needs to be ruled out is that the car was stolen. There should be evidence that there was someone else in the house. Oh. Oh, and there is. Oh, and there is. I mean by the car. I'm not trying to spoil it. Don't worry. <laughs> it's just so, one of those things. I realized I, what I said before I said it. <sighs> Guys. Alright. It's just blood everywhere. The blood comes from the other side of the corridor and ends next to the body. He was attacked in the other room and dragged to the hall. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The trail of blood from the dining room to the hall. Okay, so it doesn't go there. So we might have to. Here we go. Ooh, we don't have a position for it yet. Okay, fine. suggests that the events began in the lounge. How did Baccarini encounter his murderer? Alright, we got a new board with more clues. Whatever crushed the table must have been really heavy. Or maybe it was thrown extremely hard. I see where we need to go. Two pools of blood, one on either hey, side. Hey, all right. The trail of blood from the dining room to the hall. Ooh. What looks like the bottom of a. Oh, I guess maybe none the of these are gonna. All right, fine. Who would leave a very expensive watch? What kind of person takes off a wristwatch without unfastening it? Or fastens the strap again after taking it off? Blood. Blood everywhere. Did it break during the struggle, or was it already broken? of blood one on either side of the dining room all right a door in the corridor nope okay Fa i'm like picking all the wrong clues for the boards this was opened recently i'm sure nobody would mind if i click 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 okay so select Let's look at more clues. The door in the corridor jammed shut. An open bottle of whiskey. Hey, what do you know? Two pools of blood. Smells of whiskey. 
whiskey. A door in the corridor jammed sh Okay. Glass on the floor indicates the window was broken from outside. Mm, really? Uh, Pieces mm. of glass from the window in the hall found inside the house. Okay. There's something under there. Rhymes with schmeppen. How did it wind up under there? What can we find out here? There you go. Not one round fired. It must have happened fast. We got a weapon ish that wasn't used, but hey. A pistol, fully loaded. I'd say Baccarini was drinking in the dining room when his assailant burst in through the window. Baccarini pulled his gun, but the murderer disarmed him before he could shoot. Where did the torture begin? The blood-stained wristwatch with a glass broken. A broken table, scratched and covered in blood. Two pools of blood. One on either side of the dining room. The blood stains show that the murderer began to torture Baccarini Ooh. on the dining table itself. We got more. That was where effects. his hands were torn off. As a result, his wristwatch fell to the ground. How did the body reach its current position? I think we have a fact for that. Ah, here we go. The lamp, torn off its brackets and blocking the stairs. A broken whiskey glass found in the dining room. No. The trail of blood from the dining room to the Baccarini, already minus hands, was dragged into the hall, where the murderer used the brackets of the lamp to complete his macabre diorama. What? What a lovely word for a horrific event. <clears throat> Ooh, we got just oodles of clues. What is it with Italians and olives? They lap those things up like caviar. Hey, he said it, not me. I'm sure there are Italians out there that do not like um, olives. Like a true bachelor, he should have put these into soak. Hours of scraping to get them clean. Although at this stage, I don't think Baccarini's too worried about that. Just like Latinos that don't like avocados, I don't know who you are. Stay away from Four me. glasses. Two of water, <laughs> two of wine. Hmm. So there was somebody there for certain. I've always been a whiskey man, but I know a good wine when I see one. That normal map, though. Leftover lasagna, and it looks good. Does Why is it? it that two out of three Italian gangsters are great cooks. I'll never understand what the deal is with them in cooking. The plates and the glasses leave no room for doubt. Baccarini had company for dinner. Mm, okay. Okay, so we need to make our way down and talk about dirty the plates, guests. glasses, and silverware from it. The dirty dishes and glasses prove that Baccarini ate lasagna with one other person. Was Baccarini's guest still in the house when the murderer showed up? A door in the corridor jammed shut. A broken whiskey glass found in the dining room. Hey. What looks like the bottom of a broken glass buried in Baccarini. It seems oh, clear that Baccarini and his guests were drinking guys. when the murderer took them by surprise. The real question is, what happened to the witness? Did they escape? Did the murderer take them? Or are they still in the house? A door in the corridor jammed shut. Oh, one of the knives is clearly missing. One knife's missing. The biggest one. Shut from the inside. It opened. 
opens onto the same room as the jammed door in the corridor. A door in the kitchen, locked from the inside. One locked door could be a coincidence, but two locked doors which open onto the same room can't be. Either I'm completely wrong, or the witness is in that room. But I need Milton to open one of those doors. All right, Milton, buddy. You're my muscle. Get to work. Mr. Ness, can you open the door for me? It was open. Why did you ring? I thought I should use the doorbell so I wouldn't startle you. I didn't notice there was a doorbell. Says the man Milton had left in charge of an important investigation. So, well, what can you tell me to restore my faith in you as a detective? What is that? Not a good start. It's a camera, so Alphonse can see all this. All right, follow me. Baccarini had company for dinner. Someone from Vermont with the initials OB. Someone whose social status was a lot higher, but who was on the same side of the law. He served lasagna, and after clearing away the dishes, they opened a bottle of whiskey in the dining room. That was when the murderer burst in on them, coming through the window which he broke with his own body weight. Baccarini, or maybe his guest, pulled a gun, but it was a waste of time. The murderer was so fast, he was disarmed before he could fire. He focused his attention on Baccarini, totally ignoring the guest, and lifted him up into the air. He then threw him against the dining room table so hard that one of the glasses of whiskey was embedded in Baccarini's back. Ouch. He span around, clawing at the table, and immediately afterwards the murderer ripped off his hands. I have no idea how he did it, but all the evidence suggests he just pulled. Blood sprayed everywhere. The wristwatch fell to the ground. He dragged him through the corridor into the hall. He tore down the lamp, hung him from the brackets, and stabbed steel rods through his body. He skewered him on the iron bars, possibly taken from the fence outside, and pulled out his teeth one by one. Finally, he scooped out his eyes with a teaspoon. Baccarini must have been dead when the murderer went to the bathroom with his hands and his teeth. There, he arranged them to make an altar, weaving the fingers together and placing the teeth inside. Next, he painted something on the wall in blood, a symbol which I don't recognize, but which could have some kind of ritualistic significance. When he'd finished his artwork, he left. I don't know what he did with the eyes. I don't think I want to know what he did with the eyes. Did all this on with a teaspoon? More or less. And you worked all this out on your own, son, just by looking. More or less. I don't know which of the two of you scares me more. <laughs> Wait a second. What about the guest? Right. Come with me. Nothing. Turns out Mr. Untouchable isn't infallible. But you were close. Congratulations. This must be Baccarini's office. Let's take a quick look around. All yours. Alright guys, so yes, the guest is there. I'm not going to give it away. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I warned you it was a doozy and uh, totally blew my mind because I had never seen anything like this. So thank you for hanging in there. Uh, and I hope that you're enjoying the storyline. This this game is a world of fun for, for me. And uh, I love it mucho. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. And again, I do want to start getting these views up and up and up. So if you like it, please share it. Uh, share it with your own, you know, team crew <laughs> tune in next sunday and you'll start seeing some more uh from blues and bullets and if if you like it i will play through the entire series uh thank you so much again you guys i hope you have a great rest of your week
Bye now.